Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm the author of this HPG 2020 paper, which introduces a novel data structure called the concurrent binary tree. This is a data structure that is suitable to compute uh, arbitrary binary trees in parallel and potentially on the GPU. So to motivate this research, here's a small video that shows a terrain renderer implemented in the uh, Unity game engine that leverages our new data structure to produce uh, these images. So a couple of things to observe. Uh, the first one being that the geometry of the terrain is adaptive. So you can see a top view of the terrain geometry here, which is refined uh, depending on the camera's location. Um, the algorithm is pretty fast. It's running in half of a millisecond uh, on my GPU, which is an RTX 2080. And lastly, I'll uh, mention that these triangles are not produced using tessellation shaders, but a custom uh, subdivision algorithm called longest edge bisection, which is accelerated uh, in parallel thanks to our concurrent binary tree data structure. So I'll quickly explain what longest edge bisection is and how it relates to binary trees before diving into the details of my data structure. Okay, so longest edge bisection is a subdivision algorithm for triangles that uh, follows the following rules. So you take a simple uh, triangle and split it in half along its longest edge. And so the subdivision can be computed uniformly as follows, or adaptively according to some target criterion. So for instance here, I'm going to refine the triangulation around this uh, red dot here. And this is what happens. And so my original motivation for this work was to be able to compute such subdivisions in parallel so as to produce uh, the uh, terrain renderer I just showed that was running in the uh, Unity game engine. And so to this end, I introduced the concurrent binary tree data structure that makes such computations practical and amenable to the uh, GPU. Just to be clear, I'm going to link the uh, uh, longest edge bisection to binary trees. Uh, so because it's a uh, binary subdivision, it can be seen as a binary tree that uh, grows along subdivision depth. So this is what's happening here. And more importantly, what matters is the leaf node because these are the ones that compose the actual geometry. And uh, this is always true, uh, even in the case of adaptive subdivision, where you can see that the leaf nodes here encode the actual geometry of the subdivision. So what's useful with the binary tree interpretation is that it allows you to reformulate the problem of dispatching a thread for each triangle and computing adaptive longest edge bisections into a known, well, perhaps more common binary tree operations. Specifically, what you want to do is to be able to dispatch a thread for each of these leaf nodes and then be able to decide and to actually implement a node splitting and merging operator. So this is particularly visible if I animate the configuration where you can see that the triangle, the triangulations is adapted through time and the binary tree is evolving according to these node splitting and merging um, operations. But so even though we've identified these uh, key problems, uh, there were no easy way to do this in parallel still. And the concurrent binary tree is what allows you to do that. So on the left here is uh, an actual concurrent binary tree, and I'm going to explain how to build them. And this binary tree on the left is encoding the binary tree on the right. So the first thing to notice is that interestingly, um, a concurrent binary tree is a different binary tree that uses uh, its information to encode another binary tree. So we're using a binary tree to encode another binary tree. It's actually a full binary tree of depth D, which means that every node has exactly two children down to uh, the depth D. And in practice, when you <coughs> use a concurrent binary tree, what you need to do is specify this depth beforehand and then use uh, the tree uh, as is without any possibility to increase its size or not. So you really have to decide beforehand what is going to be the maximum depth of your binary tree before uh, actually manipulating it. Okay, so a concurrent binary tree has actually two components. The first one being a bit field, which only stores binary values, either one or zeros. And the rest of the tree is what I call a sum reduction tree, which encodes uh, positive integers. And so I'm going to explain 
the um, the um, reason why these two components are important and what they are actually useful for. So starting with the bit field, the, the bit field is actually encoding most of the uh, actual binary tree. Um, it turns out that uh, I observed that I could encode any binary tree using this simple bit field where each bit set to one would uh, denote a, a leaf node of the binary tree and each bit set to zero would provide me with uh, information regarding the depth of the actual leaf node. And uh, this depth information is related to a very simple formula which involves a simple base, uh, base two uh, logarithm. And so uh, I'm going to show you a few uh, examples to uh, develop some intuitions. So for instance, if we look at this green bit here, it can only encode um, the nodes of the binary tree that are located uh, above it. So it can be 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And because it's followed by a zero uh, valued bit, its depth is equal to D minus 1, which is leaf node 8. Similarly, this green bit is followed by no subsequent zeros and therefore encodes the node above it, which has depth D, which is leaf node 20. And finally, this green bit is followed by three zeros, which means that it encodes the node above it, which is leaf node D, which has depth D minus two, which is leaf node seven. And so under this logic, the binary tree, or rather the leaf nodes of the binary tree, can be retrieved entirely only by looking at the contents of this bit field. What's also interesting is that it translates uh, node splitting and merging operations into simple bitwise operations. So for instance, uh, leaf node merging uh, translates into setting a bit to zero. So for instance, if I want to merge leaf node 18 and 19 together, what I'm going to do is simply set this bit to zero as follows. And now I'm left with uh, one valued bit here followed by one zero, which encodes the node above it that has depth d minus one, which is leaf node nine. Similarly, if I want to merge uh, leaf nodes eight and nine, I only have to set this bit to zero and I'm done here. So again, this green bit encodes the node above it that has depth d minus uh, two because it's followed by three zeros, which is leaf node four. Okay, and similarly for node splitting, what I'm going to have to do is to set bits to one. So for instance, if I want to split uh, leaf node 12, I only have to split to set this bit to one and basically uh, create leaf nodes 24 and 25. Similarly, if I want to split uh, leaf node seven here, I only have to split, set this bit to one and I'm done. So this is particularly useful. And uh, yeah, so here's uh, two examples of two binary trees and they're encoded by two different bit fields, uh, which essentially means that every bit field, every binary tree can be encoded as a bit field. And so this bit field uh, representation is super um, interesting because it allows us to solve node splitting and merging because if I have a couple of threads that are running and processing this bit field, what I want to do to make it parallel is simply make the uh, bitwise operations atomic. And there's uh, hardware instructions on uh, both CPUs and GPUs to do that effectively. Okay, so this solves the node splitting and merging issue. And now we're gonna focus on how to dispatch the thread for each leaf node by going back to uh, the uh, original uh, concurrent binary tree. So what I want to do here is uh, basically dispatch a thread for each of these bits set to one and basically retrieve the, uh, the decimal value of the node um, that uh, is encoded. So here, what I want to do is dispatch threads 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the following uh, bit uh, locations. And the way I do this is by using the rest of the binary tree, which is a sum reduction. So it's very simple. You basically start build it uh, in a bottom-up fashion and you essentially start from the bit field and sum the bits up to the root. So for instance, here you have an one and a zero, which sums to one, one and one sum to two, and then you carry on, this sums to three, and then the rest sums, etc., down to the root node. 
And what this provides you with is basically the number of leaf nodes by construction. So here we have exactly nine uh, threads to dispatch and we have the number of leaf nodes here, which co uh, coincide. And the rest of the uh, sum, partial sum reductions provides us with uh, an algorithm that allows to actually decode the node uh, to its uh, proper uh, decimal value. So for instance, um, here's um, th um, thread number five, which I'm going to dispatch to its according um, uh, leaf node by using the following algorithm, which is detailed in the paper and relies essentially on a binary search. But I just want to provide a small intuition because it's very simple here. So what I do is basically start with the decimal value of the thread identification number here, which is five, and initialize the decimal value to one. And what I'm going to do at each stage is look at the two children nodes. And if the decimal value here is lower than the one on the left children, you descend on the left and achieve uh, retrieve uh, leaf node number two and carry on until you hit a, um, an, um, a value that's equal to one. So here I'm going to carry on. Five is greater than three. So here I'm going to turn right and withdraw three to the number five, which gives me two. And this means that we need to descend on the right. And once again, two is actually equal to two. So I need to go right and withdraw true, which is zero. And now we've hit uh, a one value. So that means we're at a leaf node, which is leaf node 11. And so here what we can see is that we've properly decoded thread ID five into leaf node 11, which is the um, uh, six bit um, in the bit field. So this solves the last issue and basically allows us to process the contrary binary tree in parallel. In order to be a little less abstract, I'm going to provide some implementation details as of how to actually implement the concurrent binary tree. So since it's a uh, full binary tree and you have to choose the depths uh, beforehand, you know you're going to have to allocate at least two to the power of d plus one minus one elements. And so in my implementation, what I do is that I allocate directly two to the power d plus one elements and use the very first element to store the maximum depth d. That way I just have to store two to the power d plus one elements. And when you're initializing your bit field, you, you just start at the two to the power of d uh, element and set uh, any element you want to, to one. Once this is done, you compute the sum reduction, which consists of two loops. The first one loops over the depth of the concurrent binary tree, and the second one loops over the elements at each level and basically computes the sum reduction. So this is trivial to compute in parallel using a parallel four uh, algorithm. And whenever you want to split or merge some nodes, what you do is again a parallel four where you iterate over each um, leaf node of the binary tree by looking into the very first element of the sum reduction and use the binary search algorithm to decode the actual node encoded by the concurrent binary tree. And then depending on whether you'd like to split or merge the, uh, the nodes, what you're going to do is th set uh, the values in the bit field to either zero or one. And what I do for the terrain demo is essentially loop at each frame and perform uh, a split merge loop and a compute sum reduction at each, at, at each step. So this is done progressively through time and this is how it works. Um, if, uh, yes, so I'd like to emphasize the fact that this is actually very simple to implement in practice. And I've released a library that provides uh, you with all the tools I've just described uh, on at the following website. And it's only, uh, it's a header only library that's only 960 lines of code. Uh, regarding performances, so what I did in the paper was to benchmark how uh, the algorithm scaled with respect to processor counts. So what I did was I used a multi-core processor and executed the parallel fours on a varying number of threads just to see how uh, both the sum reduction calculation and the node splitting and merging routine would, uh, would scale. And it turns out that I get uh, perfect scaling. 
So meaning that uh, executing, uh, well, basically the performances scales linearly with the number of threads. And I also added uh, benchmarks with, on my GPU, so an RTX 2080, which has a huge amount of threads and that naturally performs much faster than uh, an eight core CPU. Okay. And so uh, thanks to this data structure, uh, we are able to compute these uh, triangulations in parallel. So um, I have released another source code that uh, provides you with uh, uh, a kind of um, uh, example, a very simple example of longest edge bisection. I'm still working on releasing the uh, Unity implementation, but it's not yet ready. So in the meantime, make sure to uh, check out this uh, particular repository. Um, regarding uh, performances, so uh, one thing I want to, to stress is that uh, basically the performances are mainly bottlenecked by the sum reduction stage where I need to sum each uh, bit values down to the root. Um, and uh, well, I, I'm not an expert in uh, computed sum reductions and I'm pretty certain that there might be some uh, optimizations here to uh, to find. So this would make the algorithm much faster because this is currently what's bottlenecking the, the method. Okay, uh, this concludes my talk. I'll just uh, finish by saying that um, the concurrent binary tree is not restricted to longest edge bisection. Basically, uh, you can uh, interpret the uh, binary tree data as whichever subdivision algorithm you want. So for instance here, I'm using a quad tree computed with uh, Z ordering. So again, the leaf nodes are what forms the actual geometry. And another example would be a Hilbert curve. So I really believe uh, that uh, concurrent binary trees can be used to compute any subdivision algorithm that's self-similar in this way and compute them on the GPU in parallel. So this concludes my talk. Um, I'm leaving this slide here with uh, links to the various source code I've written and released uh, um, in open source on GitHub. And with that being said, I'll be happy to take some questions now. Thank you.